Hello, Internet, and welcome back to Makers on Tap, the Bonfire Chronicles. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck. All right, my joke's done. There you go. <laughs> so welcome back. Um, we are, at this point, post-Earth, um, and I am finally back. Uh, and the main reason is, is because me and the guys have actually not talked since Earth. Um, and it's been very little to no communication because we've all just been hectically busy, um, from that. And so, um, I was talking with Aaron on Thursday and they were just going over a couple of the cool things that had happened, um, that I don't think we'll be able to talk about tonight, but that were really exciting things that they got to do. So it just sparked this idea of like, Hey, why don't I interview you guys about earth and just kind of get your experience from what happened? Um, so what, what, what can't we talk about? I was not briefed on this. I mean, we can cut this. Yes. We well, should talk about what we're drinking. Oh yeah. I, no, we should open that. I, I forgot you're new here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad we don't we don't beep. I feel so bad for you if we did, but nah, fuck off, dude. <laughs> All right, so um, this is Joe, and um, the first thing we're drinking tonight is a present, lovingly packaged and brought all the way over from the UK for us. Is that a yes. Neon Mine burrito? I, it definitely looks like a uh, Chipotle burrito. burrito. <laughs> it's uh it's properly sized to be a delicious burrito, but I don't think it is. It was brought to us by Greg, the designer of the tool changer, and he made me promise that we would both open it on air and drink it together. So breaking normal form, we went straight to a together episode so we could find out what it was. Right. <laughs> So Aaron, was this was it. this one of the things that you guys received at Earth? Like, did he give this to you there? Yes. yes. Okay, that's awesome. Honestly, I think his plan was to drink this at Earth, and he forgot about it, so he gave it to us. But you know, I ap- I'm gonna pretend he brought it for us. Right. I I appreciate that you did wait for the full cast, um, to be able to enjoy this a little bit. So while Joe's opening that, you got any project updates, Chris? Um. At this point, um, yes. I So I'm working on getting some of the stuff made for my R2 and kind of getting some of that ready. But I bought a new printer. Um, I bought a Igloo Mars or Mars Ooh. Igloo. Um, nice. So I have banned myself from using it for right now until I build my curing chamber. Because I have all the stuff for the curing chamber. But I don't want to like get get the thing that we talked about where like I get it working and then I just stop working on anything else. So I am setting a goal for myself before I can start using that one. Hopefully I'm planning on working on that next Thursday actually. Um, but we will see. Joe now has it open, but it is dark and so I cannot see it. All right, Joe, read it off. It is uh, Old Peculiar, the legendary ale. From Thixen Legendary Ales. It's Ooh. cold filtered and unpasteurized. Oh. <laughs> so does that mean it's got all the botulism in it? I think so. I mean, the, this the, is about to be some real good stuff. The label is interesting. It's it's a very old looking gold sealed label. Um, it's got some phallic things on it. You know? <laughs> We'll post pictures. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Well, do you have a bottle opener? You want to pop that thing open? Description on it, besides the label. Uh, they spell really. pasteurized weird. There's an EU in it. Yes. Wait, no, that's that's normal. Maybe I'm an idiot. I would agree with that. I uh, I don't have a bottle opener. I'll be right back. All good, all good. Do we want to pause the episode? No, keep going. Okay. So, first impressions. What did you? What What did you get? Or no? Do you have any project updates? I do actually. Yeah. So, if you listen to the last bonfire episode, in case you weren't aware, we're in front of another bonfire at Joe's house. <laughs> Hence my joke earlier. <laughs> but 
in that episode, I talked about how I'm trying to reduce the amount of technical debt in my life, essentially. Okay. So I, I did. So I got an iPhone. <laughs> so I got an iPhone. <laughs> it's fucking brilliant. You know. I've gone full on into the, the Face ID, the Apple Pay. It's you all, realize, it's like. It's all great. You 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 have to realize like one of the first episodes was you going off about how uh, I don't have a cup um, about how just like awful I was for having a closed source piece of shit in the makerspace. <laughs> a lot has changed since then. Oh, has it? <laughs> I have aged, my friend. I have a lot. aged. A lot. Um, thank you. Yeah, but it's great. Um, what else? I've been starting to learn a lot more OpenSCAD. Yeah. Um, s- since uh, we we might we might talk about this tonight a bit, but um, Autodesk changed the licenses for the um, Fusion 360. Okay. And you know they're sensible changes. Right. But right. It, it was enough of a push for me to. There wasn't much left when I got to mine. <laughs> Fair enough. You're it, good. it was enough for me to just start looking into other CAD software. Yeah. And I've always had a thing for OpenSCAD, so I figured it's time to just start. You know, before I before I knew Fusion, you know, I didn't know it, and yeah. the only way I, I learned things is just by doing it. Right. So now, instead of just using Fusion, I'm just defaulting to OpenSCAD, even though I, even though it's going to take me a lot longer. Yeah, it's been a lot of fun, and I've been really as a developer, I've been really enjoying uh, designing in, in OpenSCAD. No, that's interesting. Yeah, okay, it's been a lot of fun. Hell yeah! Do you have any product updates? Oh my god, there's so many. Um, <laughs> do you want to? Do, does everybody want to take a swig first yeah, before? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. The old peculiar has been uh, distributed. All right. It's a it's a dark brown ale. Ooh, it's got a strong smell. It is strong. Ooh, it's so smooth. Mm-hmm. That has like no like. Ooh, that's dangerous. Yeah. Good. That's ooh. <laughs> Boy, I see that. I see multiples of those going down really fast. Yeah, you could, I could, I could probably finish that alone. Oh God! Yeah. I, I could easily probably finish two or two, all, maybe three of those was, alone. It's only a five point six, so okay. that's a pretty safe. But that was a bomber that we just split. So yeah, that's. But yeah, that's, that's good. definitely that's so smooth. <sighs> okay, it's project project updates. updates. Yeah, I made a pair of glasses. You did. And, and it, I heard it got seen by quite a few people. Yes. Um, they were very well received. People were very excited about them. Uh, excited enough that I'm going to continue this project. Uh, oh, wait. So, wait. You were the one who de- made these? I just thought that you got the files offline. Oh, no, no, no. I designed everything. Oh. This is, this so, you finally got sick of everybody going, are those 3D printed glasses? And then finally made the 3D printed glasses. Yes. <laughs> That's really what told yes. That's exactly what happened. And even funnier, I based the initial shape off the glasses that everyone thought were 3D printed. Um, <laughs> That's so good. I just, I really liked those frames and they finally, right. they broke at the bridge and I was really sad when they finally broke and like, man, those frames were so old and they were like $13 from China. So, right. you know, it was their time, but, um, no, uh, a lot of people really liked them. A lot of influential people really yeah. enjoyed that's, them. That's, that's what I heard. <laughs> I, I, Adrian that's... Boyer was playing with them and he was excited about them. Interested. I don't know if excited. Yeah. But interested. Yeah. When he uh, when he came over, Joe. When when I uh, Adrian came over, Joe was like, Aaron, Aaron, take a picture, take a picture, <laughs> take a picture. Like, like threw his phone at me. I he already like, had my phone. I <laughs> just barely saw it, like, because I think you guys posted it on Twitter, and I got like the alert that you guys pushed something, and I was like, no, fucking way. <laughs> like, yeah. Yeah. So that was fun. Um. But yeah, I, I designed the frames, and then a friend of mine helped grind the lenses for me. Uh, she works in a lens lab, and uh, so I learned about that whole process and got some feedback on the initial design. But you know, the initial one worked. Yeah, and I'm not wearing them right now, but I've been wearing them for like the past week, and they're super comfortable. Um, yeah, uh, I was pretty excited about that, and then. Um, I think that's the main one other than I've been really tearing into my shop since the flood. So parts are yeah. ordered for the four by eight CNC for the, the long rails are ordered. Uh, the uh, Y axis rails are here. Yeah. Um, I saw those on the table. <laughs> yeah. So like 
progress is going to start happening with that. And yeah. the shop organization started to happen. I got one of the Sigmas working. That, yes, and it looks awesome. Yeah, one of the fleet of Sigmas. I <laughs> <laughs> And I bought a Sigma shelf today for the rest of the Sigmas. <laughs> <laughs> I I got all excited and you'll feel you'll feel ashamed for me. Um, I realized my mistake quickly, but I felt like I almost got a Sigma. Whereas I walked in and we were teaching a class for a foam smithing class, and um, the teacher who was in the classroom literally was like, "Yeah, I'm having trouble with one of my printers," and I was like, "Is that that one over there?" And he goes, "Yeah, yeah." And I was like, "That's not a Sigma, is it?" And he's like, "No, no, no." no. And I look, I was like, "Oh shoot, it's a Da Vinci." <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So <laughs> I now have a Da Vinci in my basement. So <laughs> I I. Don't know what I'm going to do with that, but we'll find out. <laughs> There's an interesting mod community around that. Uh, Carl. Yeah, I was going to say, Carl, Carl he, did a lot of Da Vinci mods before he did the White Knight. That's Yeah, he built like a three-foot Z that drops out the bottom of the machine. No way. It, yeah, it's it's neat. Okay, that might be interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> just, I, I'm, I'm ex- like, for one, I'm just excited to have you guys back because I've heard like, whispers of stories and just kind of like snip it so let's let's just get it out of the way first what was your guys's impression of murph i know joe you had been there last year aaron this was your first year earth 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 we're gonna yes. do that a lot this episode, yes we are especially <laughs> as we drink uh for everyone's reference we were talking about east coast rep rap fest yes which is in um boston bel air maryland or bel air bel air maryland about 45 minutes from printed solid um does that is that a story we 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 toured printed solid okay we saw a filament extrusion line filled with ice and beer that's pretty great (laughs) that was that was the best part i mean they they have to compete with see me c and c so that's a pretty good way of doing it (laughs) and in true uh joe's drinking at somebody else's shop's form i hid all my beer bottles in random places (laughs) throughout their shop yes dave's probably still finding them (laughs) um but um, now East Coast was uh, super fun. So I'll give my impression. Actually, Aaron, you give your impression first, so I don't taint it because this is your first time. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it was great. You know, it was my first East Coast Rap Bat Fest. Um, it definitely a lot of it felt a lot more organized than Murph. Um, all the sponsors had their own tables, you know, predefined. So there, w- there wasn't like a mad rush to get a table. Yeah, that was kind of nice. Which um, is, nice from what we've heard, boring. well, I mean that's something that might be coming to Murph with the next. As, let's not get people's hopes up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> As an exhibitor, it's definitely nice to not have to worry about that. Yes. Yeah. Because we, we we were exhibitor at Murph this year, and then also for Earth and for Murph, you know, as as for all those who were there, you know. They they somehow got the doors open earlier than anticipated, and mm-hmm. word word of mouth got around, and everybody was rushing over, it and it's a mad rush to get a good table. Whereas with Earth, it's like it's all all set beforehand, and you just show up and get your things set up whenever. Right, it's much more chill. Which okay, is, I like chill now. The other high point of that was being able to publish on social media where we were going to be yeah. on the map. Mm-hmm. So that yeah. was cool. That's that's completely fair. I mean, to be able to like actually put it out to people who want to come and see us that's that's a definite plus yeah so it definitely felt more organized but it definitely didn't feel mature as an event okay there are a couple things i don't know how deep we want to get into this but well i was i was interested because like from from the outside looking in it definitely seemed like earth was a lot more a lot more almost exhibitor f- facing um, and less community focused. Like, I feel like there's such a community at Murph of like, just like, like <laughs> the massive wouldn't be a thing without several people at Murph. <laughs> yes. Like yeah. there was, we were looking for connectors at Murph and we were like rushing tables going, does anybody have a box with these connectors? And like, that was such a cool thing to be like, everybody had a piece in that. Yeah, and resurface mount soldering boards. Right, like everybody was there just helping us build that. Mid print. Uh, <laughs> yes. Google, Tim. Yeah, you know, it definitely <laughs> kind of feel more, almost more like a 
a get together more for the exhibitors than for the community itself. Yeah. Whereas, you know, most, a lot of the exhibitors are a part of the community. Right. But so I guess when, when I say I didn't feel, feel that mature, they, they had it. So they had a lot of door prizes, you know, for people who showed up and, and had badges and stuff. Yeah. They had, they had a lot of really good prizes and we, we tried to give away a makers on tap episode as a as a prize so like okay. we would do like a personalized like whoever wins we'll do like a 30 minute interview with that person oh, that was a neat idea yeah but they the problem they had was that no one was showing up to pick up door prizes oh and they had like filaments they had giant spools of filament they were giving all kinds of things and just no one was i don't know if it was just no one was listening to the did the they overhead. did like most people think really really hard to understand the overhead. What did most people think that it would be a thing where it's like if I put it in, they're going to contact me later, even if I'm not here? Or I don't think it was communicated well. Okay, no, that's fair. They, learning pains for that. So uh, for yeah. c- for context, how long has Earth been around? Second year. Oh, Second year. okay. Yeah, so, so it yeah, definitely. definitely pains. Yeah. Okay, which it, I mean, let's be honest. From again, from the outside looking in, seeing everything that was on social, I was, I will shout out, hell yeah, I was watching you guys, I was watching Amy, um, and I was watching a couple others that were posting pretty frequently. Um, our friend, uh, Dragon Maker, um, what's her name? Louise. Louise. Um, I was watching her as well and just seeing all the cool stuff that was coming out of it. So, um, like it was it was looking pretty cool and for them to already have a size like that in a second year is pretty incredible yeah so that's that's where my updates can come in okay uh so last year i went and it was in the same venue and the venue was half full okay and this year the venue was full full yeah Damn. Um, yeah, they had about 800 attendees last year. They stopped giving badges out at around 1,500 this year. Oh. So they're you know, doubling so damn near the event double. size. Yeah. And, um, literally growing pains. Yeah, li- yeah. yeah, everything's literally growing pains. Um, you know, like little things. Like this year I didn't know where the 3D-printed derby was. Even though Aaron was racing it, I never saw it. Yeah, it, right. was, it was out in the middle of nowhere. Like and by nowhere it was just like up the stairs and around the corner. <laughs> yeah, the, the gymnasium, the gymnasium was kind of awkward because there were some people all. There was a couple people around. You have to go like up some stairs and then there's like a like an eight foot, ten foot hallway that goes around the gym. So like the derby was in there. Um, there was some company that did automa- automatic uh, print sh- shover offers. For like print farms, uh, okay. And then there's like a cafeteria where they had like the the post Earth like hangout buffet thing, which is kind of awkward. Um, yeah, it was fitting a, a large event into a sports arena. Yeah. So, yeah. does it have much room to grow beyond this, or do you think they're going to stay there next year? Or I hate to see them try and squeeze it all in. I'd, okay, I would I would like to see them expand next year into something else because. The getting food, especially out at the hangout, trying to find the derby. I felt bad for the exhibitors that were up in that walk area because I feel like they got almost zero foot traffic. Okay. Yeah. Like, no one looked at the derby at all. And if you did, it was super packed because once you get five people there, now it's cramped. Yeah. And there was a 3D scanner yeah, for yeah, like a body yeah. size 3D scanner that I didn't see until Sunday until they were tearing it down. So, Shoot. like, um, I, I feel like it, the event is at capacity in that venue. Okay. And that venue is huge. So, um, you know, there it's at a college campus, so maybe there's other options for next year if they want to keep it at the college campus. There was a bunch of, of good reasons to have it there. Right. Uh, but it's probably extremely cheap for them to hold it there. Yeah. Uh, it came with some caveats, like no cosplay weapons as an attendee. Uh, at all? That's a big thing. Yeah. It, um in fact, was that, was that due to the threats to Nerdgasm guy? That was due to uh, the college campus's policy on weapons and replicate weapons. Oh, that's fair. So, yeah, I mean, but, uh, um, it was kind of like the no food, no fuel, no fun rule for Maker Fest, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> stop me if I get on a rant. So um, exhibitors, exhibitors could, could have cosplay weapons. And, yeah, but, but like, but like, if you were attending and didn't have a booth and hadn't been vetted, you weren't allowed to bring weapons. I, so so it's very again, similar to like. Stop a movie me if I now. get on a rant. 
that's a really just nonsense rule because I go to I go to cons all over the U.S. and like are they on college campuses? Yeah, they're on they're at event centers with their own type of security and everything. And like I've gone through metal detectors and everything to get everything through. Um, and it's never been an issue. Like the yeah, it, most that we get stopped is anything involving a gun prop and that always gets vetted and yeah. you have to like show that it doesn't have a trigger, show that it doesn't have mechanisms, anything like that. And then you have to put an orange tip on it. But like swords are like, as long as a sword's not metal or wood, then it's normally fine. Yeah. I, I think it was, uh, these are the college rules. And if you don't like it, you cannot have your event here. Kind of thing. Fair enough. Um, kind of like Maker Fest. Yeah. So you know, I don't blame them. And uh, they, the people that needed to have weapons at their exhibitor booth, like Project FDL and Midnight Giant. Yeah. They were all allowed to do what they needed. Well, to and do. that was and gonna be the first one that I was like, damn, like I would love to have that Thanos sword like still there. Like that would have been fucking awesome. Oh, it was there. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like I, if that got kicked out, because that's such a freaking cool. Like I would love to do another episode with him if you're listening which from what i hear you are um did you guys do an interview with him again with carl yeah mm, i don't think we did okay with carl oh, i thought you got an interview with carl no we already talked to him oh. in general i don't think right. we did yeah well we should no. just have him on he's yeah, a cool we dude <laughs> we really need to have him on for just a full episode just yeah that's what i'm saying <laughs> i would love to just hear this process of designing the white knight and then scaling it down for the squire. Cause I'm sure that was a whole thing in itself. Oh, did, cause also, did that get announced? Oh yeah. It was there. Oh, yeah. okay. He also 3d printed dragon scales and like covered the aluminum extrusion with them. It was pretty neat. <sighs> I, okay. But back to your cosplay thing, I would love to see Earth expand into a bigger venue that would allow more cosplay. Yeah. Cause I think one of the neatest things of Murph was that, you know, Amy double D had dev had like several costumes that weekend. Yeah. Um, Spectre three D did, you know, broke ass wonder woman did stuff. Yep. Um, you brought some stuff. I brought a few things, yeah. um, which all my stuff was fantasy based. So it wasn't, it wouldn't go anything against that. But, um, like that was something that I was so excited about last year with Murph was the amount of cosplay. Um, I will not for the sake of some people here, um, put a deadline and say for sure that we are going to get it done. Joe, you don't know this. Okay. Um, I will kind of announce that the cosplay guild is in the middle of working on something potentially to have premiere at Murph. That would be really freaking cool. Um, I'm not going to really, yeah, you know it. Yeah. Cause I vetted it past you. Now, is, are these the things that you can't talk about? No, 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 no. This is just something that I don't want to put a deadline on because I don't want them to feel pressure. Um, pressure is the best motivator. <laughs> For some people. Deadlines are the only way to get things done. <laughs> it's it's pretty close to another event that we're doing a lot of hard work at and that it's going to be like our first thing that we go to and have a big presence at. Um, but this, this thing will be developed within RCL and... Um, it will very much like have RCL built into it. Sweet. So I will, after the episode, I will tell you about okay. it. Okay. So, um, so overall my impression of earth was, um, it was pretty excellent uh, yeah. in a whole lot of ways. Um, I don't think it will ever replace Murph. They are different in, yeah. in a whole lot of ways. Yeah. Uh, but it will, definitely have a special place for me and i will be at every one i can possibly be at for sure so um yeah the one thing coming away from earth that was significantly different for this event for me than any event i've been at in the last three years is did you notice what i did almost as soon as i got home you started making again yeah 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 you well you didn't like so that's kind of what I wonder because like you have you have post con depression when you leave Murph. Oh god. We all get post con depression because <laughs> it's like all of our friends are there. Yeah. And we have a blast and we drink and we have fun all weekend. And then it's like the ride home you start getting post con depression. Yeah. Almost and a, it's like during the pack up. Yeah, pretty much. Cuz like then you like all your friends are starting to hop on planes and they're starting to like take off and it's like it fucking sucks cuz like I like 
this last one, because like the first one I went to, I didn't know a whole lot of people, but like I hear you guys play it in the shop, so I'll absolutely shout you guys out. Sam from E3D, dude, I fucking love you. <laughs> like you're amazing, and I miss you. I will miss you Wait, like hell. Which, which Sam? Sam two. Sam, Sam two. Or, yeah, Sam. Sam one or Sam two? Sam two. We, we love you, Sam one as well. Yes, yes. I got to know <laughs> Sam two a lot more because he's fucking awesome. Um. So, <laughs> um. But both y'all, like all the E3D guys, like everybody from there, just getting to hang out with all of them, uh, Sanjay and the whole, uh, Greg and all the crew, like y'all are fucking awesome. Um, like, it, like you get that feeling. And so I was wondering, like not having as many friends built into there yet, did you just get the excitement that you get about halfway through Murph? Oh no, all my friends are there. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> fair enough. I mean, I mean, most of them, but, um... I think the big there were two big things. Yeah. One, I didn't rush to finish a major project. Okay. I rushed to finish a small project that got completed in a really satisfactory way, which was the glasses. Yeah. Uh, I, I put the IDEX printer that I was planning on hold uh, because I was stressed out from everything else and didn't Fair need enough. to add that to it. And um, Yeah, that, I think that was the main thing, was I didn't have a big stressor leading up to it, and I yeah. could just enjoy the event. And um, we got a, re- a lot of really amazing feedback on the podcast. Oh, yeah. So that is that is one of the things that like Aaron kind of like poked into a little bit. And that was I was like, hey, let's stop. Let's do this. Let's do this together. Um, and that's where I was even like before I was like, hey, let's sit down and record. I was more like, hey, can we just sit down and talk? Because like... We haven't yeah. sat down and talked in a while. So I yeah. was like, let's go accelerate. Let's do something together so we can actually talk. But like, we had the time. Let's record an episode. I want to hear how it went. Yeah. It is. Um, turns out we have a lot more than 45 listeners. <laughs> um, 35 listeners, whatever yeah, number know. I put on the, on the <laughs> koozies this year. And um, people really appreciate the things we have to say. Yeah. Uh, and that was really exciting to hear. I've I've heard not only people but some pretty influential people appreciate what we have to say. Yeah. Which <laughs> like yeah, I'm pretty influential. Like like Aaron, yes. <laughs> um So, that was pretty exciting. Um and it made me feel good. Like not like oh, like so and so is listening to the podcast, but it's more like uh people are listening to the podcast and care. Yeah. Yeah. And like our legit, they legitimately care about our project updates, um, and legitimately care that we continue making this podcast. It, it was nice to hear that, like, if we stopped, somebody would be sad. Well, and that's like, <laughs> <coughs> I think that's what energized us so much after Murph, like this year, was just like meeting fans mm-hmm. and like having people come up and actually recognize us, having hearing that we're being played in shops and just like. Well, oh, now we have oh. like legitimate friends that started out as listeners, right? Which is super cool, right? Yeah. And that's a, like fucking awesome. Like, I it, it's 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 an amazing thing to to see how far this has come, yeah, and it just mm-hmm. developed into its own thing. Yeah, um, like we were talking to Matt from from Pusa Labs. He said that you know I've I've been paying attention to who's listening to you, and you've got the right listeners. Yeah. So if you're listening to this podcast right now, <laughs> you're the right people. <laughs> Guys, want you to know that we got we got all the right people in our area. Yeah, but like one of my favorite parts of Earth though was meeting up with some of the uh, the, the people I've been talking to on Twitter for a while that weren't that Murph. Yeah. So like yes. um, like Brendan from yeah. Brendan Builds, um, Josh Vasquez, um, yeah. both amazing <laughs> makers, and you know they're they're not they weren't exhibitors, so they were like you know in the middle. But they were near our table, so I was able to find them and talk to them. But th- that was one of the things, though, is, you know, you get all these big YouTubers that came in, and all they do is walk around the perimeter of Earth, and they do, they get all their videos of all the all the, the the companies, of the exhibitors. No one was going through the middle, which was like 90% of Earth, was all right. the people coming in just showing the cool stuff they make, right. which is where I think our, our show shines, is where we don't really care so much about everybody on the outside, we care about the, the the people that come in who don't have a platform to show their cool stuff on. Well, and that's I think that's been something that has been at our core is showcasing the makers we believe in are doing great things in the maker community. 
um, as much as we can. That's why we, we did the maker of the week stuff. And like, we, we absolutely, we have a focus for people who are still in their shops, making it happen as they go. Like it's, we appreciate the businesses. We appreciate everything they do. Um, and they do, they do some amazing stuff, but it's, it's always been about like the, the guy or gal in their, in their shop, just making cool shit. Like that's, that's the sign off is make cool shit. Like it's, it's just something that we've always been about. Um, so it like, that's, <clears throat> that's something that was your favorite. Um, and I want to, I want to get that from Joe, but he is currently stirring the fire. Um, I really hope there's no more hidden firecrackers in there, Joe. Cause <laughs> I, I don't know if my anxiety <laughs> can handle it. Joe has just thrown a tree branch at us. <laughs> <laughs> Joe threw a handful of firecrackers in earlier, and some of them didn't go off. <laughs> and some of them are still alive. I don't know. We'll if I can see. It. <laughs> so, Joe, 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 are we? D- can we announce the new printer? Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, as motivation to get it done. With I want to build. I I want to build this alongside. <laughs> I you have guys. spent almost every day putting at least two hours into sourcing things for nice. this today. Or this no week. way. Okay. Uh, and I've come up with a lot of shit. Uh, <laughs> um, so, uh, but yeah, it's called the watery uh, the watery tart. Why do we call it the watery tart, Joe? <laughs> so, all right, all right. So at Earth, uh, you know, um, Carl of knack 3 3d designs uh brought the squire which is the scaled down version of the white knight belt printer yep and we're like yeah that's a great printer but in true open source fashion we think we can do it better Not so we were really better it's different. different just yeah. yeah yeah so we're thinking well you know he's got the white knight and the squire and joe's like what's what's that squire from the king arthur story with the sword oh you mean king arthur <laughs> arthur uh, and like, well, why don't we call it the Excalibur? I'm like, eh, that's too on the nose. What about uh? And then you know, of course, you know, whenever you hear King Arthur and Excalibur, you think of Monty Python, right? I'm like, all right, well, what? <laughs> so, <laughs> so the, the, I'm like, well, what about the watery tart? He's like, what? I'm like, you know, uh, some watery tart distributing swords in a lake is no basis for a system of government. Watery tart. So there you go. We were we were driving around, not driving around. We were riding around with other people, and you know, well into the night. <laughs> this was, yeah. I it's my favorite project name I've ever it's ever come up with, and like in true good project form, it's a proper open source name. The first step is the name. Yeah. Yeah. Those are usually the projects that get finished. Is the ones that have a name. A bad name. A bad name. <laughs> you know. The best name. You you know when it has a bad name, it's going to get big. Because yes. <laughs> then you think later on. <laughs> yeah, so I, I've put a lot of effort into finding belt materials this week. Um, the the problem that we're running into with belt materials, and if people that are listening want to help us with this, stainless welded seamless stainless steel belts are hard to find. There's like two companies that make them, and they're expensive. Yeah. And uh, especially in single quantities. So we're probably looking at like a $200 belt to get started no matter the size uh, because of okay things. So if we can do a group buy on a belt, it could go cheaper. I mean, I'm already in. If yeah. we're doing a belt, I'm already in. So I do know Carl is putting together, Carl from Neck 3 Designs in um, conjunction with Printed Solid, they're going to be doing a group by soon on White Knight sized belts. I, but that might be too big for what we're shooting for, but there will be a group by going on for bigger. that soon. <laughs> Have it's, you not seen my 700 millimeter printer? Yeah, bigger. <laughs> um, you know, and I don't really have a problem with the White Knight size, other than most people wouldn't build it because it's four That's feet fair. long. Yeah, it's a big machine. Oh yeah, um, and. I'll be honest, I'm not convinced that it needs to be. Okay. I'm not convinced that there's a, a total use for a four-foot-long infinite axis. Okay. Um, 
Yeah, it's four feet like long. Like the actual printer? Yeah. It doesn't seem that big. It's four feet long. Okay. The, the cart that he has it sitting on is four feet long, and it's almost as long as the cart. It may as well be four feet. Yeah. Um, it takes up a good amount of space. So there's a whole bunch of design considerations that I'm looking at to potentially make it easier to build and make it a little bit smaller. Put it into a size constraint that people would actually use. Okay. Because um, I've seen a lot of belt printers with very tall uh, hypotenuses. Uh-huh. I, you know, it's, it's the only way to put it. Right. Zoom tight. <laughs> right? Yeah, Zoom no. Tight. Um, you know, the, <laughs> the, the hypotenuse of the triangle is, is very... They're at a 45-degree angle to minimize that length. Right. That requires custom nozzles. Yep. We Which E3D something. is saying that they're going to support. They said that at Murph. Sanji says a lot of things when he's excited. <laughs> um, okay. We'll actually have a handful of custom belt nozzles now. Oh. Yeah. They're from Olsen. So the people okay. Ruby nozzles. Do you want to say this on mic so that oh. way people can actually yeah. hear you? We should really find a three mic setup. <laughs> I just got to buy the pod for the Zoom. Yeah, yeah, we should do that. We could, we could split that. So, say, so you got a handful of... Yeah, so um, Carl did a, a giveaway for people who were building a white knight. So we gave away one belt, one actual belt, which I didn't win. But then he also had a handful of prototype Olsen nozzles for belt printers. And the only difference is that they they have a much longer taper to where okay. the um, filament comes out. And that, that taper is what allows you to get a wider range of angles. Because if you had a shorter nozzle, then it's awfully hard to do it. Right. They also have no flats on the front, which uh, completely changes the printing dynamic of the nozzle. Yeah, that's why you gotta. Uh, so there's there's no way to iron with the nozzle, and there's no way to smooth the top surface. So, um, well, <laughs> if, if you look at a normal, what, thing, what does that mean, Joe? For those who aren't aware, because I'm totally aware, but for those who aren't, you're totally aware. <laughs> uh, <laughs> drunk Aaron. Uh, the the reason there's flats on the bottom of a 3D printing nozzle is as you are extruding out, you typically will extrude wider than your nozzle's diameter. Yes. Unless you're using Cura, and then you use, you extrude at the exact diameter and things are weird. Um, but you typically will extrude at like a 0.56 for a 0.4 nozzle, maybe. Yeah. Or a 0.45. Um, depends on what you're doing. But that extra squish that comes out needs to get smoothed out somehow, right? Yep. And the flat on the nozzle face does that. Yes. Um, so that's why when you get into like the volcano nozzles that have like a 1.2, they've got a massive face. Okay. Uh, because they have to smooth out all that squish. Right, right. Well, these nozzles that Aaron has have no face. And that okay. is so that you can... Uh, <laughs> it's that is so that you don't have to have the nozzle <laughs> perpendicular to the printing angle. Yes. You can have it at... Uh, I think Carl said that his research has shown that about more than seven degrees away from perpendicular starts dragging the nozzle into the print. Okay. But that allows you to angle the nozzle a little more, a little closer to perpendicular with the bed so that you can get good squish and contact with your first layer. Yeah. What I'd like to do is try like a 25 to 30 degree angle, which puts more overhangs into your print. So you actually have to print support, which yeah. I don't know how well that would work. But it allows you to print with non-custom nozzles and you know, potentially some other nice engineering things. Wouldn't that, wouldn't that limit your Y, your Y-axis height? Since that's essentially what the Y-axis is. It, if you have a whatever the fucking geometry. Yes. <laughs> yes, it would. Uh, it would only limit it in how long you want the hypotenuse to be. The, 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 the angled face of a triangle. I yeah, you. <laughs> you're a pro. I also graduated high school, <laughs> <laughs> and college. Um, although, as much as I am excited about the, this, I'm sporting the Bradley sweatshirt. As much as I am excited about this, it is kind of about Earth. So, Joe, what is what has been your favorite thing about Earth? Because we went off on a sidetrack. Well, real quick update, though. Okay. If you want to follow the watery tart progress, don't tell me you already got a Twitter. No, here's the thing. After Murph, after Murph, I made the belt printer forums. Okay. Which was forum.beltprinters.com. 
I'm in the middle of rebranding it because I, I love the idea of the belt printer paradigm, but yeah. really I, w- I was talking to Carl and I got um, Bill Steele involved and they're like, you know, maybe we shouldn't be t- so tied to belts. And really, we should be calling it inf- in- infinity printers because really they can print infinitely large objects in right. one axis. So I'm rebranding the forum to the infinityprinters.org um, forums. I sh- by the time this episode comes out, it should be done, finally migrated over to the new domain. Yeah. So if you want to follow the watery tart progress, we'll be trying to do some build logs and maybe do some more discussion, get some more people involved there. So that way everything's documented, it's searchable, you know, it's there for, you know, Historical purposes, but there we go. I just went there. Fair enough. There. You're, what is that? That's my air compressor. We're sitting outside my shop right now. Um, the tangent you just went on gave me a really good idea for a non belt, but potentially infinity printer. And that's why we're doing the rebrand, is so we're not tied to belts. Hmm. <laughs> this is going to be a tangent. Okay. What were you asking me? So. <laughs> Because I only have so much time, um, because we are, we went. Oh, we, oh you were asking me what my favorite thing. What at was Earth your was? favorite thing at Earth? <sighs> there were two. Okay, three. There were three. Three. Protopasta's uh, portable yes. filament extrusion line. Okay. It made me so happy to see other people making custom winders. <laughs> um, Fair enough. And like it, the whole thing was just neat, and I loved picking. It was so fun because we we interviewed them, yeah. And uh, w- the guy we initially talked to turned out to be the guy who ran the extrusion line, and he was like, "You don't want to talk to me. You want to talk to the owner." <laughs> and then we talked to him for about thirty four seconds, and we were like, "No, no, you're the one I want to talk to." So then we interviewed him, and it was great. Um, and I totally forgot his name, um, but he was super fun to talk to. So they also have an Aaron. He was also a software developer, <laughs> and they wrote their own software to handle all the extrusion lines, and I thought that was super neat, but he wasn't there. Because he's antisocial. Unlike our Aaron, <laughs> who's a social butterfly after two drinks. Only what I am. That is the absolute truth. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I speak no lies on this podcast. Um, no, my, uh, my other two favorite things were the uh, open source laboratory water tester yes. built okay. in super rep rat fashion he replaced a thirty-three thousand dollar piece of epa equipment with about fifteen hundred dollars in 3d printed open source parts designed <laughs> in open scad um that's too good and we broke chris um <laughs> and the other thing was um the 12 head uh Piper base. Fucking tool changer. saw this everywhere, and that's fucking amazing. Were you on the episode where we where we, we saw him it? Like the we saw my beer? and then like I saw the stuff coming out of yeah. Earth. He, were you, were we about him on the yeah, we talked about him on the podcast, which yeah. was awesome. Was it still as? Oh God, yes. Yeah. Just okay. As bad. Awesome. It was great. It, <laughs> Yes, yes, bad isn't good. <laughs> like it was funny because when we got there, I we actually had two tables. Like they had given me a table for my printers and then they had right behind us given us a table for the makers on tap. Yeah. And I was like, I really don't want that. Uh, I'd really like to just keep all of our stuff on one table. So we only have to man one table. And then we ended up manning two tables anyway, uh, for different reasons. But I ended up trying to give my table up to him mostly just cause I wanted to sit with him the whole event and pick his brain and <laughs> Fair like, enough. talk to, and then I didn't end up talking to him at all. And I'm really sad about it. So that. you guys didn't get an interview with him. Aaron did. Okay. Okay, cool. I don't cool, remember cool. what I was doing, but it wasn't that fair enough. Um, Oh, I was unloading. I was packing all my stuff into a truck. That's what uh, I was doing. And then uh, what's your final thing? My sad thing from earth was lulls by closing. Yeah. 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 And hearing about Project FDL's potential demise as well, like that's that, bittersweet. <laughs> those were those were both real big downers of the yeah. whole weekend. So what was the FDL's? Re- so what, why I, I've heard about the Lulzbot stuff, but what like why is FDL potentially closing down? So uh, this is actually probably something to have a podcast on, but uh, basically they was it Nerf? No, it wasn't Nerf. Um, it was product sourcing issues. 
Oh. So they've gone through like three motor suppliers since Murph. And wow. and since Murph, they have ch- completely changed their business model from custom 3D printed blasters because at Murph, the blaster was closed source still. Yeah. And right after Murph, remember we talked to him about this, they yeah. open sourced the 3D print files and started selling electronic kits. Yes. And almost overnight, they went from a print farm to an electronics house. And uh, it completely changed the dynamic yeah. for them. Right. So um, they, it, it almost sounded like they were kind of ready for something new. Fair enough. When I talked to them. But, um, they seem really cool. They were amazing. Yeah. And, and they ran a really great booth. They had a shooting gallery <laughs> with their, their blasters. And um, as far as I know, they're, they're working to find a supplier and potentially keep it alive. Yeah. But like... Uh, the business had kind of come to a crossroads for them. Fair enough. I, I'd seriously like to have them on to talk about this. Right. Yeah. Because like this is something that I think a lot of maker-based companies run into. Yeah. Where yeah. They, they start out in a completely feasible manner, and then like one day they like hit a point where they're just like, wow, I can't keep this up anymore right. because of this, this, and this. I need to make a decision. Yeah. And a lot of times that decision seems to be closing the company down and it sucks. Um, Especially in terms of somebody like them who had such an original thing that it's no longer super original. They were trendsetters that there's there's lots of blaster companies now. Right. Um, Hey Siri. What are you doing? Remind me to follow up with the FDL people. (laughs) (laughs) God damn it. (laughs) (laughs) i'm still i'm a new apple guy i'm still learning god that was wonderful i didn't kick it don't worry no you didn't kick it you were on the wire (laughs) drunk aaron strikes again um what what was your i'm the life of the what was your favorite thing (sighs) i think my favorite thing was definitely meeting all the people meeting all the people i've been talking to on twitter for a while um the film online was awesome. It was great seeing that. Um, really, my favorite part of Earth is the same as Murph, which is just m- t- hanging out with everybody in person that you, that you talk with online. Yes. I mean, yeah. that's really just the best part. Because, I mean, you can only say so much stuff online, but then you're in person drinking beers and hanging out afterwards. It's really about, it's really about the after parties is what it is. Yep. And just hanging out. And that, that's my favorite part. Absolutely. You know what was one of my favorite parts? You didn't get so sloppy drunk that you couldn't show up on Sunday. That was pretty great. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm trying to make an improvement, Joe. That's, that's happened and twice. I noticed, <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm acknowledging it in public. This, this, is the first, this is the first, you know, maker event where I didn't get alcohol poisoning, like, the next day. Alcohol poisoning. We set that goal, and you made it. Yeah. I'm so proud. High five. It's all, it's all about continuous improvement. <laughs> <laughs> continuous improvement. So, Joe, I know, I know your opinion. Um, you're very much definitely going to go as, to as many of these as possible. You fell in love with it. Aaron, your takeaway, would you want to go back to it? I, I, I think I will. Um, you know, the issues I had with Earth are literally because it's a two-year-old event. You know, Murph's been going on for, what, five years now? Six years? Something like that. Yeah. yeah. So, you know, it's only going to get better. So, um, I'll definitely go again. I mean, it definitely pulls a different crowd than Murph. Um, it's, it's a much more accessible area of the, of the country for some people, especially those out of the country. Um, Goshen's definitely a pilgrimage. Which is, is respectable in some ways, but in some ways it could be um, restricting to some people. So I, I feel like it says something that it's it's already growing so much in mm-hmm. year two. So I'll definitely go again. Yeah, for us it was definitely a much more of a financial and time commitment to right. go to Earth, and uh, I think it was one hundred percent worth it. Absolutely. It could have been less of a time commitment. You just wanted to go up on like a Wednesday, or Thursday and then leave on a Monday. And aren't you glad we did? <laughs> yeah, it was nice, but it, it could be less of a time commitment is what I'm saying. It could be. I could take two days off work. <laughs> it could have been like one day off work. But man. It was nice coming home on Monday, half day and not worrying about things, but. It was super fun. We went to the National Air and Space Museum 
and the other Air and Space Museum. I never remember which one. The Smithsonian one that's in D.C. Yeah. yeah. We went to that one, and we got to see the door for Project Egress. And oh, it was you get to see cool that one. To see how many of our friends worked on like, that. I didn't see that one. Yeah, so this is when I had my old. This is when I had my old phone. So my my front camera broke. So all Earth Weekend was just all my selfies. But that's yeah, awesome. So I'd take a selfie with with Pocket Grass. I'd take selfies everywhere because my front camera was broken. Yeah, because I know we had a whole bunch of. I was wondering, like, I thought that possibly we were going to get contacted as a makerspace to possibly contribute, but like I know that they. I I thought that we were going to. No. Um, no. no. We, Fair enough. We knew I thought some it was part of, of the Nam. right people, but not all of the right people. Okay. Fair enough. Fair enough. Like I, I heard inklings on Nam that Nam was like getting tasked with finding some people, and so I was like, oh, well, maybe we'll get in. Maybe we'll actually have some connections enough to get in. But like, I didn't hear anything, so I was like, well, okay. But like, I, I watched the video of it getting built, and I was like, that's fucking awesome. Yeah. So that's I, all. Sheesh, okay. It was it was very neat to see how many people we knew yeah. had contributed. Right, like being able to see your friends' things in the Smithsonian. Right, yeah, that's so. Congrats to those guys. Right, you and I also had a great career talk in that museum too. Yeah, we did. Apparently, in the same vein of a uh, another interview that we're going to release at some point with uh, Parker. Oh, yeah. it's the same same vein of oh know, making career changes. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. Very cool. (laughs) Well, um, unfortunately, I have to cut it a little bit short, but I am sure that most of these will, most or more details will absolutely leak into podcasts releasing over the next couple weeks as well. Um, So it, I, I'm glad you guys had a good time. Do you have any final thoughts before we close out? So now we can start the actual podcast. Oh, Kelly motherfucker, don't tell me it's actually, it wasn't recording. <laughs> it definitely was. Okay. <laughs> so my final thoughts are, <laughs> my final thoughts are you Hold need to come microphone. next year. <laughs> we will see. We will see. Um, you didn't even go to the thing that you weren't going to go for. I need to know what, it, like, I don't you, know what you're you, refer- you said that You said that you weren't going to go because you weren't going to go to this thing with Kevin Smith. And yeah, that's tomorrow. That's not Earth. Yeah, that's tomorrow. there was something else on Earth. Oh, yeah. Maybe they were too close. Yeah, I. Anyway, the work. point is next year. <laughs> yeah, you should. Come. We will. We'll see about possibly swinging out for next year. Um, you guys have definitely baited me with enough good stories to potentially come out. The thing that I'm excited about is that like Murph isn't a regional thing. Yeah. That like obviously these event types of events can work in multiple locations and draw different crowds. So yeah. you know I, I've heard rumblings of a uh, Southern California rep rat fest. A barf? Uh, <laughs> Is it a barf? No, yes. it's not. Not Bay Area, Southern California. Uh, Which opportunity? Know, that's right? an easier way to get me out there. That's yeah. that's part of my work area. <laughs> yeah, and uh, there's rumblings of an ARF. Well, ARF happened this year, Australia really? Rep, Rep Rat Fest. Yeah. Oh, and like okay. I just feel like we should do that. The, the real, Man, the if you want to go to the prisoner island, like the real more power to you. <laughs> too many Rep Rat Fests to go to now. It's becoming a struggle. <laughs> That's an, that is an issue life. that I am willing to fight. <laughs> <laughs> All good. Aaron, do you have any final thoughts? No. All good. Aaron, not talking. Weird. <laughs> All right. Well, well, thank you guys for listening. Thank you for, um, thank you for letting yourself be known at Earth and coming up and talking to everybody. Um, wow. about the amazing things that you've, com- that you've, this is why we don't smoke on the podcast. Right. <laughs> <laughs> um, but thank you. Like we're going to have some amazing interviews coming out. I've already heard about some of them. Um, so stay tuned for that. Um, 
again, thank you for listening. And if you want to find us, we haven't done this in a while. If you want to find us online, um, follow us on social. Yeah, uh, obviously, Twitter. we're posting a lot of cool stuff on Twitter. Um, so feel free to follow us and be able to find all the cool stuff that we're talking about and that we're posting about. So, so we have donations. We do. We do have donation buttons. So if you feel like you would like to make a contribution to the podcast, if you think like we're doing great things, feel free to support us in some way. Um, we definitely want to be able to create better and more awesome content. Um, and the biggest way we're going to be able to do that is if we have people support us. Yeah. So we're on Patreon now. We are on PayPal. And we're also set up with Pay. Very cool. And so far, we're only getting support through the beer pay, awesome. which is the free and open source Patreon alternative. For sure. Also, we accept donations in beer, which we will drink <laughs> on the show. Thank you, Greg. We can. I'm not okay posting it yet. And often, Steve. I would be interested if we. I have a PO box that Ooh. I would be willing to open up. If, oh, that'd be fun. If people okay. You want to Let's, ship us anonymous project things? Like, <laughs> let me put it like this. If you want to do, if you want to send us stuff and you think like that would be a cool idea, tweet us on Twitter and talk to us and show interest. And if we see interest, I will open up my PO box for people to be able to send us stuff. Where else can they tweet us at? Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> All right. So on All Twitter, right. <laughs> there is at Makers on Tap, at The Bearded Tech. Yeah. Damn it. <laughs> that was fucking bright. All right. That's hey, it. Hey, that's, that's the end of the podcast. <laughs> I'm running away. That was loud and bright. Wow. That was Good loud. night, everybody. That was a firecracker. Keep making stuff. <laughs>